communication is foundational for the success of an organization, sure. any organization. Right. If you don't have effective communication, there's going to be lost time, there's going to be lost money. If you've been watching our videos, we talk about it all the time. 37 billion, billion with dollars. a B, Ooh, 1 thousand million times 37 yes. problem <laughs> per year. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Granison and Shines of Sidori International, and welcome to our Mastermind discussion. We have an awesome conversation today. We are going to be talking about the 12 C's of communication. We're not going to go through all 12. This will be a four-part series, so we're going to capitalize and talk about the first three. I'll tell you what those are in a moment. Before we dive into the meat of the situation, I have two of my favorite coaches here with me, as always. And I'm going to start with ladies first, Miss... Yasmin Murray with Sedary International. Yasmin Murray. Hello. Hello, hello. And over here and I have Al Gleason, the curator of Nonsense, also working with Saduri International. There you have it. Yes. This is the power team, and we're going to give you some power lessons today. So open <laughs> up the ears wide. Again, communication is our forte here, and one of the opportunities with communication is that it's so vast, there's so many facets of communication. So again, we are going to talk about the 12 C's of communication, meaning that every single word we're going to talk about starts with a C. We will also make sure we read the definition, and therefore you have clarity. We're on the same page as to what the definition is, and then we're going to expand our mindset and our thought process, and some of this you may not have heard it put like we are going to talk about it today. However, each one of these C's are very, very apropos for a conversation. You can have multiple of these C's in operation at one time. Our job as coaches, as trainers, as professionals is to bring this to the forefront of your mind so you can utilize it intentionally and have your conversation intentionally structured, intentionally framed versus by default and leaving some things out. So that being yes. said, Mr. Al Gleason, I'm going to start with you. In terms of communication, Talk about the opportunities that lie within communication for an organization, whether it's small or large. Yes, I, communication is foundational for the success of an organization, sure. any organization. Right. If you don't have effective communication, there's going to be lost time, there's going to be lost money. If you've been watching our videos, we talk about it all the time. 37 billion, billion with dollars. a B, Ooh, 1 heavy. thousand million times 37 yes. <laughs> problem per year. It is a significant problem. And most people have a mindset that because they talk, they think they're effective communicators. Sure. So it is a vast problem. It is definitely something that we can all adjust our mindsets around. Yep, one of my favorite qu quotes that I coined is, just because you know how to talk does not mean you know how to communicate. Right. And speaking of that, we do a lot of talking by default. So when, we, when you hear communication, Ms. Yasmin Murray, what comes to mind for you, for our audience, in terms of how important it is for us to understand this factor? Communication is a two-way street. There is a, a sender, right. there is a receiver, and then there is a message. So in order for a message to be clearly transferred from one individual to the other with the 12 C's, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about, is what it's all about. <laughs> that factor is, uh, both their factors, I said, very, very strong points to remember and keep, again, at the forefront of our mind that communication is essential for an organization. There has to be communication some way, somehow, somewhere. When I say somewhere, a lot of times it could be in one of your systems and allows people to see information that is pertinent for their job to be completed on a daily basis. And so communication is all over us. And we have two major types of communication. We're going to be talking more about the verbal communication today. Even though some of these are appropriate for nonverbal communication, and they're also important for written communication, we have found that people, they write the way they talk. And if you frame your, your, your verbal communication the right way, you can have appropriate conversation. So that being said, we have organizations that you, and, co and entrepreneurs that you coach, Al. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to communication, the definition of communication, is everyone pretty much on the same page or is there, are there varying degrees of understanding what communication is? I find that people 
are a little challenged mm -hmm. when it comes to articulating the definition accurately. Okay. So they'll get one part right. Typically, it has to do with them talking. Sure. But That's true. understanding that there is a message and a receiver and that it's two-way and some of the other nuances that are a part of every type of communication they miss sometimes. Mm -hmm. What has been your experience when explaining communication? Same as Same. Al said. Mm -hmm. It's more about them, how they're trying to convey what they want to convey and not making sure that the other person understands what they're saying. Sure. Or doing more of the, most of the talking <coughs> and not letting the other person talk. Right. Yes. Yeah, very true. No Monologuing. listening. No, no listening. listening. No listening going on. <laughs> listening exactly. is not involved at all. No listening going on. And listening is involved Talking. in communication. Mm -hmm. there, are may, there may be a time when listening may not be as pertinent. And so we'll talk about some of the ways we show up with our communication and different skill sets and different opportunities. So I'm going to start first. Communication is also in your presentation skills. And a lot of times when you are presenting or if you ever do a speech, sometimes that may be a monologue, even though we may ask for audience our participation or engagement. But most of the time when we're delivering a speech, it's mainly monologue. You're talking to people and giving them ideas. And sometimes in training as well, unless you bandy the conversation back and forth, we just have to listen. But then there's yes. observation that comes into play when you're communicating, when you're utilizing that presentation skill. So communication is vast. So one way it shows up is presentation, doing your presentation skill. What's another way that communication shows up for you? Man, I think it's, as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about how nonverbal and verbal are so interwoven yeah, with absolutely. each other. We talk about presentation skills, mm -hmm. we talk about observation, and we can talk about so many of aspects of nonverbal communication that, that are tied into that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how does communication show up in another area for our audience? Active listening. Active listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. Also shows up in your sales communications or your marketing communication, your materials, you have written communication that's yes. also being delivered to people. And everything that we're talking about right now, before we get into 12 C's is, is again, very much so tied into what we're gonna talk about the 12 C's. So what we're talking about and how communication shows up, also these 12 areas that we're gonna talk about, three today, fit into these areas. What other way does communication show up? Well. You know, something that I was thinking about as I was preparing for this, this recording today is the importance of self-control. Yes. And then also, with just one of our modalities, you know, five parts of the self, but then also having a handle on uh, emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because your ability to assess a situation and speak to it based on that context sure. or those contextual factors sure. are critical. You saying things one way in a certain situation could be perfect. You say it the same way in another <coughs> situation and it's a disaster. Yes. <laughs> and so having those, having the ability to assess the situation, your emotional state, right. those yeah. of who you're communicating with, it's a, it's a big part. And it's not necessarily considered communication. Right but it is definitely an aspect of it. Yeah. And then the self-control piece, you know, watching Huge. what you say, how you deliver it, yep. you know? Are you angry? Do you just want to fly off at the handle and you're expecting people <laughs> to respond to that? Right. Are you gonna be a leader yeah. that yells and demands at people <laughs> and really your leadership is limited to the authority that you have in your position? You sure. know, things like that. Uh, self-control is a big piece of it as well. Self-control. And also control. knowing your audience. <laughs> I've seen somebody talk to an audience that was totally irrelevant of what they were talking about mm -hmm. and the audience was totally lost. Yeah. So knowing your audience is very important as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shows up in how you are leading people as I was talking about as well. Well, how do you lead people? You have to talk to people in order to lead them yes. and to lead people, to inspire them, to motivate them, to also handle the management side of leadership of managing people and or things you all you have to talk and you're not a leader unless you have followers sorry that's just it you're not a leader unless you have followers and the mindset of a leadership or leader is always communicating the appropriate way we're going to dive into three of those ways today with the 12 c's giving you those opportunities to you start utilizing this right away after the video so let's go ahead and dive into 
our first C. The first C is, so Yasmin's going to say the word, then she's going to read the definition so that we are on the same page of what it is that we're talking about. So the first C is clarity. The quality of being coherent and intelligible in your communication. So what does that mean for you? It automatically disqualifies some people. No, <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> but it's true. I know it's true. You know it is true. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, bad out. Okay. So <laughs> the thing that I think about with that, and we had a conversation about this not too long ago. Sure. And actually it was Yasmin. You said your clarity is not necessarily their clarity. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'm not stealing your thunder on this, no, no, but I think it's ahead. important Go that we talk about it. We're on the same team. Sure. Yes, yes. <laughs> because you communicate something with clarity, it does not necessarily guarantee yes. that other people are understanding what you're saying. Right? Their clarity is not necessarily your clarity. And I think this is an important point to talk about because as a leader, it's important for us to be clear, mm -hmm. but then also verify that who we're talking to understands what we're saying True. Mm -hmm. because their clarity is not necessarily your clarity and we talked about some of the reasons that happens one of the big things is tribal communication tribal talk right what yep. you're used to saying mm -hmm. here so there's a lot of assumptions made about that type of communication uh, we have a lot of people using acronyms and and other phrases that are specific to industry or specific to yes, this particular company exactly. and then the assumption is that everybody automatically understands that so when you talk about clarity and you use that type of language you open the door for a lot of miscommunication yeah. and as a leader a subordinate is not necessarily going to raise their hand and say I don't understand what you mean by that because they don't want to feel like they're you know inferior or yes yeah, incompetent mm -hmm. those types of things so it is a, it's critical as a leader to make sure that you're very clear and then that you verify that whoever you're speaking with is understanding what Very you're saying. Very good. Yes. And I'll give you an example. For instance, if somebody has written a report for you and you find some errors, you say, well, I read the report. Go fix the errors. What errors? Would you tell me what the errors sure. are? Mm -hmm. And so first tell them what the errors are and what do you want them to be? I mean, how do you want him to explain it? So like Al said, mm -hmm. first of all, you've got to clarify what What's in your mind? It's out in speech, in words, so some, somebody understands what you're talking about. Yes. So your clarity is t totally what <coughs> somebody else's clarity yeah. is. Right. And, in, and in clarity, what comes with that also is pronunciation, and that can be regional, meaning that somebody may pronounce a word different in the South than someone says something here on the West Coast. So that comes into place. Enunciation also, making sure that you fully enunciate your words yeah. and say them with all of the syllables to enunciate the word correctly. And then being articulate, how do you form the sentence structure so that it comes across with the clarity and the intention that you want to deliver with the message that you're giving the other person. So making sure those three factors are there. Again, yes. pronunciation has a little bit of a nuance only because it can be regional. Somebody, for instance, one time, I'll give you a complete example of this. I was at my cousin's house. We were younger, my sisters and I. And of course, we're from California, and we go over to Texas. And of course, we know they speak with that slang, that southern twang, right? And so <laughs> my cousin asked us, hey, y'all want to play laugh? And we're like, laugh? laugh? Yeah, laugh. How do you play laugh? Like laugh. No, L-I-F-E. -E. Oh, life. Oh, okay. So the pronunciation was different. We know exactly what we're talking about, but we thought she wanted to, I don't know, tickle somebody or something. We started laughing. I don't know. Or you just start laughing. How do you play that? I don't know. But life. So the pronunciation, but the articulation and also the making sure the enunciation are factors of clarity, huge factors in, in how someone perceives what you're talking about. Anything else you want to add there? No, especially in corporate, like you said, mm -hmm. your tribal langu language is not somebody else's. Sure. You yeah, very much language. so there, especially the tribal language. That's a big yes. one. And as coaches and consultants, we hear that all the time, and we have to research what that means internally within the organization. Look at some of the documentation. Can we find that or ask if we can't find it? Hey, what does that, what does that mean? Click the clarity right then and there. Yeah. But the tribal language does have an effect on how some messages perceive. You have a new person in the office, Go yeah. back to the basics. The tribal language will come about later on. But bombarded. I know that I was bombarded with a tribal language before. I was thinking, what the heck? It was like my first day. I'm thinking, oh my God. It's funny yeah. you say that. One of the ex companies I had, I had to learn 120 acronyms right off the bat. 
as soon as I was employed because mm. otherwise they told me you'll be totally lost if you don't know these acronyms. There, there you, you go. have it. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. And you know, something, something else about that, because of tribal language, some organizations are struggling because that tribal language is not the true definition or the true meaning of what's being communicated. Absolutely, yeah. that's their so language. So we see that, yeah, yeah. but they, they're, they're, they have a misunderstanding that is the foundation of how they communicate mm -hmm. within the organization, sure. and it's causing problems. Yeah. And entrepreneurs as well. Those yes. of you entrepreneurs who are listening, be clear. <coughs> when you deliver presentation, clarity is of the utmost importance. Yes. There may be times we have to, in order to get more clarity, slow down our speech, we may have to do that, elevate or accentuate certain words, paralinguistics, that's where that comes into play. <laughs> Making sure our volume reaches to the back of the table, the back of the room, whoever is there who may be a decision maker but needs to hear what you have to say. All these other nuances come about when we talk about clarity, but, but clarity is such an important aspect of communication. Also, one of our modalities is repetition. Yes. If somebody's not clear, repeat it and have them repeat it back yes. to you. Yeah, and get clear. Did you say, or did you mean that, or what did you mean by when you yeah. said that type of information, yeah. which is completely opportunistic for you? As Actually, well. I think that's a great way to make sure that you don't look incompetent. Yes. Yes. Is hey, for clarity, mm -hmm. I want to make sure I understand you. Mm -hmm. Is this what you, what said? you said? Yes. So that's a great way, to, great technique to use. Yeah. And and utilizing that part, what Al said as well on the intentional side, making sure that. Getting that clarity is utmost important. That's why we have the number one. Yeah. Got to be clear. Everything else will dissipate into something else, some other region of the nether regions or whatever, if you're not clear. <laughs> and this is when we start utilizing our imagination, which can be very, make everything else very, very vague. Yeah, I and think not clear. this is what he said. I think this is what he said. <laughs> Let me fill in this unknown information with my own thought process. <laughs> I could be completely wrong, but never mind that fact. I'm going to fill it in anyway. All right, there we have it. That's how it works, folks. Number two that we're going to talk about today is? Before I, I go to number two, that's how wars start. Ooh, <laughs> miscommunication. Wars. Wars the inside the house. Wars out of the of world clarity. wars. Yes, exactly. Yes. All right, number two is correctness. The quality or state of being free from error, accuracy, the quality of being right in an opinion or judgment. All right, you want to take that one first? Yeah, I think it's, again, it's important to not assume yes. as a leader. Be and correct. make sure you get as much information <coughs> as possible. If you aren't sure, make sure you ask the right questions so that you can get clarity mm -hmm. so, you can, <laughs> so, so you can be communicating right. in, a, in a manner that's correct. Yes. Right. A lot of times people assume. They assume that what's in their head has been articulated or that other people understand it. Mm. And then mm -hmm. the, the correct information is not communicated. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. And do your research. If you're not sure, do the research. What you might think be, might be correct might not be unless you support it with data. There's got to be data supportive. Make sure that you're correct and accurate. Absolutely. Very important there as well, especially if you are... If you're the analytical, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> the analytical type, you can, ex you can accentuate that to your advantage, meaning that you can utilize information, data, statistics in order to further your message to get right. clarity of what it is that you're talking about. But correctness is, is something that, in, you know, if so there's a, another part of this opportunity as well. Something may be subjective to you in, in versus your opinion, and if it is your opinion, then it's okay to not stand in having to be right or having to be correct. You can walk away with, let's agree to disagree. Right. <clears throat> and if you refer to your point, you can back it up with information, data, statistics, in order to be even more correct. So opinion comes into play as well. So when we talk about opinion, let's talk about that for a second. You guys, I mean, how does, or where does opinion, or how do you see opinion fit in with correctness, or even wanting to be correct when you're saying things? I would always mention if I'm giving the opinion, say, in my opinion, sure. this it's is how one. it is. Yeah, it's a good one. Always let them know that it's your opinion. It's not data. It's not concrete. Mm -hmm. It's not written somewhere. It's my opinion. Sure. Yeah. Okay. How about you? No, I agree with that. I think that that is a caveat that lets everybody know, mm -hmm. hey. Maybe we do need to research this more. Maybe there's some other information out there. Right. 
but they won't take it and run with it like right. you've already you done the that. research or you know that it's the fact. Yeah. Yeah. I think and, a, and a portion of that being correct as well can be to utilize a transition phrase like Yasmin. In my experience, there are times when I know that I'm right based on my experience. And you can't deny me my experience. This is right. what happened when I did it. It might not happen like that when you did it and or said it. However, right. that is and can be subjective. And right. you can t always test out the thing that did work from your experience and further the lesson learned for the other person. If you're teaching something or if you're <coughs> communicating whatever the message is, you can utilize right. your experience and part of being correct. However, again, the testing portion there is, is, is very apropos. Yeah. And especially if you are a person of authority, I will give you an example, especially in this climate with COVID, everything goes back to Dr. Fauci. Well, what sure. does Dr. Fauci think? Mm -hmm. Well, he, most of the time he says, in my experience or in my opinion, because things are changing so rapidly. We don't have all the data. Mm -hmm. Just because we don't have all the data, there is no concrete evidence of a lot of these um, side effects that are going sure. on. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that if you <coughs> are a person of stature or authority, you really have to mind what you say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like Al said, yep. you can take it and run with it and totally misconstrue it. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think another part of that is being mindful not to speak in absolutes. Mm -hmm. Very true, very true. Your very, very experience. True. Yeah. It's important to mention that caveat. Always. This yes. is what I Never. have experienced. Yes. 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 Sometimes leaders say this is what it is, and it is based off of factual, actual experience that they have. But that does not mean that it is applicable to every situation right. and circumstance. Example would like be, yeah, well, like the example that you mentioned. But you know what, what, what worked in business, let's say yeah. in 2018, the way you yeah. could network, for instance. Yeah. Does not did not apply in 2020. You should always give somebody right. a business card. Right. That's or absolute. I've always right. done it like yeah. this. Or or yeah. shake shake hands or whatever right. the case may be. Now it's you know, fist yeah. bumps. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And along with that, also with correctness, and this is where leaders have to be mindful of how when you are even so the, the point of being very staunch correct about something and if, say if it's not proven or whatever, you do jeopardize your competence, but it also can enhance your competence. As the leader, you have that influence and the authority, so people are going to look up to you automatically. People are going, especially your subordinates. Other ones who are colleagues, unilateral positions across the organization may think differently of you or about you, doesn't matter. However, it does establish a level and help you to establish a level of competence, especially when you can back it up with information, stats, data, whatever that may be. And also experimentation is good for being correct and proving something that has the opportunity to work within your organization or for your company. So that's that. Anything, any other thoughts on that one? Cool. Let's go to the third point we're going to talk about today and then we will wrap things up. The third one is completeness. The state or condition of having all the necessary or appropriate parts when communicating to deliver a complete message to the receiver. The sender of the message must take into consideration the receiver's mindset and convey the message accordingly. Very well said. I like that definition. What's that emotional intelligence there? right there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> We have to evaluate who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Know your audience. If it's somebody that's very junior, very green, <coughs> they're new to the organization, you cannot effective, be as effective, most effective, talking to them the same way that if you have somebody seasoned. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's very important. But the other part of that is not missing out necessary, not leaving out necessary details. Mm -hmm. You talked about imagination earlier. Mm -hmm. And if you're not complete, I have to complete the task. Yep. And if you leave out details, I got to fill it in with something. Sure. Mm -hmm. Ideally, I ask the right questions sure, to yeah. figure it out, but Hopefully. we know the reality of it is it all I don't right. have time. I don't have access to you right now. Mm -hmm. This deadline is fast approaching. I'm going to assume, based on my imagination, and fill in the blank, yeah. which could lead to disaster. <laughs> yes, right. I'll, I'll give you an example so I can say to Al, hey <coughs> Al, when you come back from your lunch break, would you grab me some lunch? And so Al, what, what are you going to get me? 
you know, I, I have only said, grab me some lunch. Now, oh. Al's imagination is running wild. And he's like, okay, what would you like? Okay, so Al, what would you bring me? What are you going to get? Well, the last conversation we had, you were talking about how you really enjoyed the movie It. <laughs> and so I know you like clowns, so I'm going to get you some McDonald's. <laughs> so <laughs> that you will have one of the best lunches ever. Yes, That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and there you have it. That's how it works, folks, now. But absolutely, she's correct. Both of them are correct in that aspect. And, and in our program, we teach the complete communication technique, yes. underlining the, or utilizing the words who, what, why, where, where, or let's just say answering who, what, why, where, when, how in a conversation. And I, we've given in the past video, we've given some demonstration of that to understand how that works. But it's incumbent upon you leaders, those of you who have subordinates, to understand how this completeness factors into your equation when you are talking. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. You can answer or get all those questions or directives if you're giving someone a mandate or directive in one sentence, one yes. shot. <clears throat> or you can break it down and get clarity at each point in time when you answer one of the questions. Either way, you can be extremely clear about what it is you would like for that person to do. So give an example of who, what, why, where, when, how. And I'm going to exaggerate <laughs> and utilize, stick how in there. Because sometimes how doesn't have to be answered. If I said, Al, can you please walk this stapler over to Yasmin's desk? She needs it for stapling papers for her 2 o'clock meeting. That answers who, what, why, where, when, how. Just like that. It's one sentence. But sometimes I like, say, hey, can you, let's meet as soon as possible. Hey, take this over to Yasmin. And I would just say, okay, cool. And leave it there for the next two hours. Hey, Al, you haven't taken that staple order to Yasmin yet. Well, I didn't know you needed it. Did you need it right now? Yeah. You okay. didn't say that. Right. Well, if you talk in complete communication technique, then you answer all the questions and take out the opportunity for someone to utilize their imagination to assume and presume other thoughts. So the last example I gave, so I'm going to complete it with the correct complete sentence. Al, when you come back from your lunch, which will be at 2.30 because you take a late lunch, would you please stop by at the McDonald's because I know there's a McDonald's on Main Street and grab me a double cheeseburger with a Diet Coke with medium ice. Can you do that for me? Text that to me. <laughs> text that to me, please. Yes, exactly. yes, exactly. I would, yes. yes. I, wanna... I will text it to yes, you yes, so you get yes, it correct. Absolutely. Yes. So mm -hmm. now, Al is not just going to go to McDonald's and grab me a salad if I wanted a cheeseburger. Yeah. Right? So that's his imagination. So you've yeah. got to be accurate with complete <laughs> sentence, who, what, where, when, how, why. So I interjected as, uh, interjected as many of those for clarity right. and completeness for yeah. Al. And I want to say something about what I said. I mentioned it, and I didn't clarify what that was. We talk about the tribal movie. language. Yeah, yeah, but it's a movie, movie. Yes. It's right? A movie, it's a movie right? that had a clown in it. If yes. you're not familiar with that, I assumed a lot right. when I said that, you yeah. know, that, but if you don't know, you're forced to use your yeah. imagination. Yeah. What yeah. is it? It yeah. can be any object in the world. Mm -hmm. yep. What is that? Yep. And based on the context, I knew what he was talking about by using my imagination to fill in that. Because I, I did have a question. I was like, okay, it. And then as he completed his yes. sentence, I was like, okay, the movie, it. Yeah. So I got what he was talking about there. So that's the perfect, all three perfect examples yes. of why the completeness is important so you have the clarity of your conversation mm -hmm. you have the correctness of your conversation and making sure you're giving right information and data things are true and then you have the completeness of the conversation and those three can also be of course they should be in one conversation yes and your delivery whatever you whoever you're talking to and when you bandy that conversation it should go back and forth for more clarity completeness and correctness yeah. and there's nine more of these there's nine more this is part one video we're going to break this into four chunks what are your final thoughts about communication and the three C's that we spoke about some of the things that we're talking about it seems like it takes a lot of extra time mm -hmm. I want to make the point that it really doesn't it might take more time and we're talking maybe a minute or two it's mostly in your head though because it's uncomfortable. It's not how you're used to communicating. And once you try to implement these things, you'll recognize that, shoot, I don't normally sure. do who, what, when, where, why, and how. Right. <clears throat> but the time, the cost, or I'll say the investment in time on the front end, mm -hmm. 
has huge returns on the back end. Because yep. when you don't communicate effectively yep. up front, the back and forth, the imagination, the assumptions is going to cost you time and money that is way more expensive than the extra two minutes Very it took you so. to make sure you were clear and concise. And, and you are contributing to that $37 billion problem billion. when you do that. Yes. yes. Final thought, Yasmin. To me, is that if you're going to communicate something really important, jot it down, make sure you read it and reread it for clarification, for, for completeness, for correctness before you convey that message to someone and have them then repeat it back. But right now, if you remember that, you'll be halfway there. Yeah. Very well said from my two favorite coaches today, coaches today. So that is the information we want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for part two, where we're going to dive into three more of the 12 C's of communication so you can improve your communication on the front end. And as you are delivering your message and receiving a message as well, you can be ultra clear about what it is that you are talking about. I'm Grandison Shines, signing off for during National here with... Yasmin Murray. And on my right... Al Gleason, the curator of nonsense. All right, folks. Talk to you later. Have an awesome day. Bye.